Hi everyone, my name is Eric Adler and today I want to talk about Stephen R. Donaldson, an American fiction writer. He's written fantasy and science fiction. And I first read Stephen R. Donaldson when I was 14 years old. I read the first chronicles of Thomas Conant, The Unbeliever, as it's called, his first trilogy. And it came out in the late 70s and uh, I believe it was rejected rejected by 47 publishers before it came out and then it became uh, a success, bestseller. Um, and the publishers rejected it because they thought that it was too dark and too pessimistic and the hero was uh, too grim um, uh, or too much of an anti-hero. Uh, but it became a bestseller and uh, uh, I was very fascinated by this because uh, mainly because of the, the, the hero actually who is uh, as I said an anti-hero. Thomas Covenant is a leper, he's a deeply sick man. Um, this I think mirrors Stephen R. Donaldson's own experiences because he grew up partly at least in India. I believe also his father was a doctor and um, uh, in any case uh, Thomas Covenant uh, finds out that he has, he has lepers, uh, his wife leaves him because of this to protect herself and their child, he's shunned by society in the town where he lives, Thomas Covenant is a writer, uh, he falls into a depression which is I guess fairly natural in such a situation and, and then he's uh, knocked unconscious in an accident and he wakes up in another world called the land. And uh, it's never really clear if he's dreaming or not. I think uh, Stephen R. Donaldson um, has consciously left this open intentionally um, to leave space for speculation about this among the reader, readers if, if uh, the land is uh, re real or if it's just an illusion, a dream that the protagonist, the protagonist has which of course is uh, interesting philosophically. And what happens in this dream land, uh, that called the land, is that Thomas Covenant is healed miracul miraculously because like in uh, many fantasy worlds there is magic and uh, there's a special kind of clay in this world uh, and if you, if you get it on your skin uh, it will heal you and uh, Thomas Covenant is healed of his leper and uh, this is something which uh, turns his whole world upside down because he has learned to uh, live with his illness uh, which means that he has to be very very careful not to cut himself because if he cuts himself his uh, illness uh, may blossom again which of course uh, may have catastrophic consequences. So concentration is very very important to him. Uh, he's not allowed to uh, drift away in daydreams and so on. He has to constantly check himself, check his body for, for uh, cuts and so on. And then when he's healed from all this uh, he's not able to cope with it because uh, he, he's afraid that he, he's going insane. And going insane of course is uh, deadly in such a situation if you have this kind of illness because then you probably you stop uh, uh, checking yourself, uh, you, you start daydreaming, you start hallucinating and so on. So what happens is he never accepts the existence, the reality of the land, the, 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 the world he's in, in these stories, which means that he never really takes people seriously, at least not in this first trilogy that he meets, which also uh, makes him commit uh, terrible acts. He uh, are not going to give away what happens, but uh, a few things happen that, that is going to hunt him uh, for the rest of these stories. So he's not just an anti-hero, uh, he has also really negative traits. Um, he's prone to anger, uh, he's still fairly depressive, he's very passive, he doesn't want to act, uh, he doesn't want to be a hero, of course, and um, it's an interesting psychological portrait in these books. 
what I want you to discuss in these the next three videos is the second Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, the, the next three books which Stephen Donaldson wrote in the early 80s. Um, the first one is called The Wounded Land, that's the one we're going to look at today. The next time we will have a look at uh, the second book, uh, The One Tree, and in the third video, uh, the last book, uh, White Gold Wielder. I hope also to discuss the last chronicles of Thomas Covenant, as it's called, uh, the last four books in the series later, uh, starting with the first one later this year, hopefully. Um, but now let's delve into the world of Thomas Covenant, the unbeliever. Unbeliever means, of course, that he refuses to uh, believe in the existence of the world he's thrown into uh, and his adventures there uh, in this fourth book, in this ten book series. In my younger teens, I was deeply impressed by the first chronicles of Thomas Covenant, especially by the second volume, The Cool Lords with the Wands with Blue Light Magic the samurai-like blood guard, the three evil spirits who had taken hold of the bodies of three giants, the all-too-human anti-hero with his self-hatred and the stark contrast between the depressing everyday life of a very sick man shunned by society and his role as savior and his intense experience of nature in the land. Donaldson was part of the first generation of fantasy novelists after Tolkien. The first book about Thomas Covenant was published in 1977, and the story relies very heavily on themes from the Master. There, are ma there is a magic ring, an immortal Dark Lord, a city which seems very similar to Minas Tirith, a people of horsemen echoing that of Rohan, proud, wild horses like the Miras, of which Gandalf's horse was a descendant, and like stewards of the forests, and something similar to elms living in houses in the treetops. Interestingly, the first trilogy has been published in one volume in German as Die Macht des Rings, meaning the power of the ring. Well, how was my, my reunion with Thomas Covenant and his two worlds after 28 years? Covenant is still fully absorbed by, by himself and his own problems. In important situations, he doesn't act like he should, he is fairly rude to others, and is prone to meaningless outbursts of anger, although he is now 40 years old. He lives in the past. The dead are more important to him than the living, and he is constantly fantasizing about the land as it once was. In the first Chronicles, Covenant was an interviewing character, with his despair and his self-loathing. In this book, he is just unsympathetic. Like in the previous books, the pace is fairly slow, and a few descriptions, for example of people's appearance, feel unnecessary. The text is also very repetitive. Covenant is a leper, Lyndon is a doctor, we are told at least 20 times. The story gets exciting only after Covenant arrives at Revelstone, after more, more than 300 pages. The main problem with the book is the lack of tension between the characters. Covenant's feelings towards Lyndon Avery remain unclear, and you don't get a clear picture of her personality. Four young people, okay, Covenant is 40, two men and two women are struggling to survive in the wilderness, but there is no spark of erotic tension whatsoever. They all just seem tired and depressed. Covenant himself is the only one who drives the story forward. Except for Covenant, the characters are two-dimensional. The bad guys grin and laugh maliciously but you don't learn anything about them. There are monsters without eyes and mouth, which means they're not very communicative. But at least they've got snakes instead of hands and fish heads protruding from their stomachs. 
It makes you think of cheap horror kitsch rather than of an atmospheric fantasy tale. They say a movie is just as good as its villain, and this is certainly true of a fantasy novel too, but I guess Donaldson is not familiar with his simple wisdom. Magic is so common in the book that you quickly lose interest in it, with the exception of Covenant's own wild magic, which thankfully remains a mystery. The Wounded Land is a study in self-injury. Magic works only if you cut up yourself, smear the blood in your face, and hum an old song. The fact that it influences the sun, resulting in extreme changes in the environment from one day to the next, makes it difficult to relate to this world. This, in conjunction with the boring characters, prevents the reader from caring for, for the story. There is no sense of wonder, no experience of life as a great adventure, which is probably the reason why we read fantasy. In the wooded land, everyone wants to be somewhere else and probably someone else as well. Life is like a straight jacket that you just want to throw off. In The Lord of the Rings, Sam has enough sense of wonder left to admire the beauty of a single star in the sky during the journey through Mordor. I wish Donaldson's characters had had this attitude.